What's good, everybody? This your boy, Mr. E, boss of the Southside Bosses, and you already know what this is. This here is Revolutionary Hour, where we don't hold no bars. We actually tell you what's on our mind, and we feel it 100%. Now, I do want to drop a disclaimer, because this is going to be the first time I dropped a disclaimer on this show here, but this is Mr. E, boss of the Southside Bosses, and everything that I say is for me and for me only. It does not represent the views of Southside Boss Connection, Southside Bosses, nor does it represent the views of BOSS Radio. BOSS Radio is known to give a platform to everybody without a voice. Then, no matter what you believe in, we actually want to have you on our radio station to discuss your point of view of life because that's the only way that you can actually see a change in anything that you want to see a change in you have to speak up and that's why we have revolutionary Yahweh and mainly I be on here speaking up for the disenfranchised for the oppressed for the ones who have been in this land up under this foreign occupation called the United States and we have an obligation to ourselves to uplift each other and make sure that we are okay and the only way I can do that is by passing the knowledge that I have obtained and attained and pass it along to you I hope that you utilize this opportunity the right way to take this knowledge and to understand it so that you can utilize the wisdom in your everyday life Because this is for everyday life. This isn't that old case-by-case scenario situation. No, this is for everyday life. And first thing I want to do is I want to discuss the fact of the matter. What Facebook. Facebook is a major social media tool used worldwide to connect people who usually wouldn't connect. But there's a problem with that, even though it sounds great in its essence, there's a problem with that because it cuts out the whole view of everything and you only see a certain side of a certain topic, which makes somebody look like an animal, look like a monster because of how they feel. About a certain situation. Now don't get me wrong. There are situations where you can actually read right into it. And deem that person a monster. And deem that person inhuman. Because they uphold inhumane values. Such as the separation of children from immigrants. Who come to a land looking for salvation. Because they are tormented from where they are from. And even though we look at these people. As they're being teared apart. They're being, excuse me, torn apart. We have to understand their view. Their view is that they are in a place that is safe. They are in a place where they are getting fed. They are in a place where they can actually smile right now after maybe months of and years of tyranny, of oppression, of abuse. Now, It doesn't make what the United States doing right. I am 100% against the immigration reform that they have taken place with the zero policy, the zero tolerance policy. I am 100% against that. But we first must take note that they are okay. They are doing better now than they are doing, than they was doing back when they left the lands that they are from. Now, with that being said, that is not the topic that I want to get on because I don't want people to think that I am actually condoning what the United States is doing with them. I don't condone that. I know it is horrible. This is a horrific event that should never have been documented in the history of mankind, yet it has. So now let's go ahead and focus on this the right way. Now, I agree with Maxine Waters. That's the first thing I want to step on right now. I got to talk I got to talk about that because we already know what's going on with the immigrant with the immigrants and their children. We already know what's going on with that. So I don't have to go any further into that even though I will a little later on. Trust me, I will. But I it's a couple of topics I want to talk about before that. And the first one is about Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters represent a central LA district. 
that is proportionately black and she is a fighter. And when I mean she's a fighter, she had to be a fighter in order to be able to get into the position that she was in at the time that she attained that position and for the length of time that she attained that position. No little pussyfoot could have taken that position unless they was a corporate pushover, meaning that the corporations put them in that position just so that they could get their weight. Now, think about that. So when you hear Maxine Waters talk, Congressman Maxine Waters talk, you actually hear the fight in her because she is driven by passion, not by money. She is driven by the necessary humane values that makes a human being tick and talk and walk and talk. She is driven by success. For the human being, not for money, not for corporations. She is here for the natural person and not the artificial person. So when she made it clear that it is at the point now where we have to actually confront anyone who agrees with the administration's inhumane policies, no matter what they may be, she is telling you not to do it in a violent way. But to do it such as the Red Hen did it with Sarah Huckabee and to do it what they did to the Department of Homeland Security secretary at that restaurant that she was at. When she had the nerve to go to a Mexican restaurant, they refused her service. They excuse me. No, that was Sarah Huckabee. Sarah Huckabee was refused service. So she got up and left. What was the harm in it? The harm was that. There was no harm. That was a problem. See, since it wasn't handled the way that Trump supporters would usually handle things, if you go back and look at all his campaigns and all his uh, little meetings when, you know, I- I'm going to say meetings. Everybody know what I mean when I say meetings. KKK. But anyways, all his little campaign rallies and stuff like that where he had his supporters out there beating up people, beating up people who peacefully protest with a certain, or peacefully protest with a sign. And he told them what to do too. Didn't he not? Did he not instruct them on what they should do? Did he not? If he didn't, then I be damn my ears are liars. Because I heard him. And I even heard the threats that he even insinuated. True, he didn't say it because he knew he was running for president at the time. But you got to remember, this is a city mogul from New York City. Come on now. We know how you do New Yorkers get. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all came down to Atlanta. Down there when I was growing up down there in Atlanta. We know how New York people can get. And I don't blame you. You got to be tough in this world. But you can't be like that as a president. No, as a president, you have to be able to show empathy at the time. It's time to show empathy. And it's a time to show where you're an asshole. You feel me? There's times where you do this. And at the times that he's supposed to show empathy, he shows he's an asshole. And he never shows that he has empathy anywhere. That's the problem. That's the problem. We don't have any empathy. He doesn't have any empathy. And if you don't have any empathy, you would never be able to understand anybody. You say you want to work for the working class. But at the same time, though, you show no empathy. So how can you even be saying that you're working for the, the, the working class? And you showing no empathy. That's why you end up getting Harley Davidson sending jobs over to fucking Europe. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree with you with the tariff thing. So that's another thing we'll talk about a little later. But back to Maxine Waters. It's a shame how we have a lot of people that is actually stepping up and talking about they sh- that she shouldn't have said what she has said. When the actuality is they took it the wrong way. You took it as in we need to be violent. That's what she was saying. No, she ain't never said that. <laughs> she ain't never said that. Because ain't nobody really took it violent yet. If she had said that, it would have gotten violent, wouldn't it? That's exactly what happened when Trump said it needed to get violent. When he, when he said it needed to get violent, it got violent right then and there in that campaign rally as he was talking. As he was talking. Don't make me pull the clip up. You know the clip I'm talking about. 
But anyways, Maxine Waters told that they need to be confronted in public. Yes, they do, because we tried to do this shit in the privacy of the ballot room, and the ballot room let us down. Because it let us know that we have a lot of inhumane citizens of this so-called great nation. Now, this is what I really want to get at. I'm done with Trump. We already know why Trump is in the position that he's in right now. And it's all boils down to the inhumane United States citizens. And I'm not even finna say white people because that shit has been played out. Y'all know I know that that shit has been played out because it's been black people that has agreed with Trump. It has been Mexicans that has agreed with Trump. There is a Mexican slogan out there saying Mexicans for Trump. While they're saying Mexicans for Trump, they're also saying, I think it's Chico Chico Ni Madre, Enrique Pina Nieto. If I'm saying that right, I hope I'm saying, I hope I ain't chopping on y'all language because I do love that language and I have been sipping on a little something. So maybe I did chop on a little, chump on a little bit. But uh, yeah, fuck your mother, Enrique Pina Nieto, the Mexican president. Yeah, they've been telling him to go fuck his mother and not because they know he loves his mother either. <laughs> For real. Now, if they, the same people that's saying that is the same people that's also, well, I ain't gonna say the same people, but some of the same people that's saying, Fuck the Mexican president is also some of the same people that is rooting that's Mexicans for Trump. Now, how did that happen? I can't I can't fathom that. I would love to talk to somebody on that level. You know, I'm not going to argue with you. I actually want to sit down and be quiet and listen to your point of view on why you think that is even uh, sounds right. I don't know how that's how that explain how that's not an oxymoron. That's all I'm saying. Explain how that's not an oxymoron. Anyways, but back to what I'm saying. <laughs> With Maxine Waters actually charged, making the charge to actually confront people in public, especially administration, uh, the Trump's administration, who uh, are who's constantly, constantly. This is the next point I want to get on. They are constantly make taking up, taking up for Trump. They're constantly taking up for Trump. They're constantly covering his ass. Even though they keep throwing him in, throwing them in hot water. So what is it about Trump that got you wanting to put your own neck out there to save his ass? We got people telling us, "Oh, it's not a Muslim ban. It's not a. You sure it's not a Muslim ban? Because that's what he said." And then he comes out later and say it was a Muslim ban. And then now these people had to go and run and clean the shit up. All the way into the fact that it took them three revisions of the law, of the bill, to get it passed through uh, the Supreme Court. Now, I understand why the Supreme Court says why they said what they said about why they approve of the travel ban. But see, the thing about that is that none of that information that they actually came up with on the third time is anywhere near why they uphold held it the first time because yeah you forgot that they upheld it the first time they kept it up the first time they said that it was good to go the first time why was it good to go the first time they had a different explanation at that time because see now they're looking at it as what in the constitution upholds his power to be able to do that fuck what he said because what he said was he wanted to stop Muslims from coming into the country because they was terrorists. And you know what that sounds like, right? Well, fuck what it sounds like. You know what that is. That is called a generalization. And we cannot generalize a people because we are a people. And by you saying that the Muslims are terrorists, you got to actually turn around and say that the Catholics are terrorists because of the Crusades. How many of Crusades did they do? It sounded like, I remember three. I remember three of them where people were beheaded because if they didn't believe in the Virgin Mary and the the, 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 the God that was sent down here named Jesus or whatever they want to call him. I'm sorry. I don't really care. But anyways, those was terroristic days as well. And that's how they got their start. So however you got your start is exactly what you are. So if you're going to call the Muslims terrorists, you also have to 
deem Catholics to be terrorists. Not only that, but if you're going to deem the Catholics to be terrorists, you got to go bark back even further than that and say that the Europeans were terrorists as well when they, Europe, they started even in, uh, 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 putting together the Catholic, not religion, but the Catholic political system because that's what it really is. It's a political system. But if you're going to do that, you have to actually go back to the point where they were actually enslaved by the Egyptians and by the Greeks and then say that the Greeks and the Egyptians are terrorists. It, it says, you see, it never would end because you end up going to go back to the very beginning when the first people, the Slavs, were enslaved. That's how, and it's going to start from there because the Slavs were created for slavery. Now, with that being said, everybody is in that case if you're going to generalize you got to generalize everybody you got to generalize the whole human race and by generalizing the whole human race you actually set up a failure point a, a point of failure excuse me that's what it's really called and when that when you reach that point of failure everything collapses the bottom falls and when the bottom falls it comes down to revamping the whole system and it's multiple ways that a system can be revamped, but the worst case scenario is that everything goes back to how it was in the very beginning of cavemen, where we all just become really, really fucking stupid and we just start killing each other for survival. And it's starting to sound like that's what it is now, because if you actually read the newspaper, you'll find out that the Caucasian or the Aryan or everybody who is deemed to be of the pale race considered white in America is actually dying at three times of the uh, of the amount that they are born in. So that means that the, the, that race is actually dying off. Hey, I'm just spitting facts. I'll tell you when it's my feelings. Trust me, you'll know when it's my feelings. But I'm spitting facts, and at the time that I'm spitting facts, m more people are dying. So let's start focusing on how we can fix the situation, right? Hmm. So we'll focus on that a little bit more. But at the, at the, right now, we have to get across to you what all the problems are. And what all the problems pretty much really stem down to is thought process, mind frame, personalities, and preferences. So you see, everybody has a preference and they want their preference to be on everybody else. But if you really want to research everything... The way that it's supposed to be researched, you will actually find out that forcing your preference on somebody else is, deems you a dictator, a dictator. And I'm sorry, but that's what Trump is deeming to be. He's deeming to be a dictator by announcing that he really wants to get a, get around the judges with the immigration thing. You're going to deem somebody to be unlawful and illegal. You have to actually give them due process. That's what the Constitution says. It says that everyone is deemed due process, even unlawful citizens, even people who are here unlawfully. That's what the Constitution says. And that's the contract that we signed with the rest of the world. Because even though th there was delegates, European delegates, and there was Moorish delegates, and there was all for the United States, this contract called the Constitution was to be up in front of the whole world as our, as pretty much our example of what we will be. But as you have seen through history, that has not been the case. People have been able to find a way around the Constitution. That's why we have things called case laws. And that way people can be found to have loopholes and things of that nature. And this is what Trump tries to use when he says that the, 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 the human traffickers find loopholes or whatever. And they, they, this is how they get children. They send children in here and, and disguised as drug dealers and killers and shit like that. And I'm like, damn, I ain't know that little four-year-old was a killer. God damn. Man, hey, come get a little essay. Come get a little essay. You, I, mean, I know he only four, man, but come get him, man. He's old enough to shoot a gun. Is he? Oh, no, he ain't. Oh, I'm sorry. You see how stupid that sounds? But anyways, let's keep going. Now, with these loopholes being in place, people tend to say that with the things that with these loopholes actually apply to, they apply to human traffickers and 
drug dealers, or people just just trying to sneak through the border. Now, my thing is, is that in order for somebody to have that loop, uh, know that that loophole even exists, it has to be taught to them. Because I'm a United States citizen, partially, but I'm a United States citizen that actually looks into law, and I just found these things out myself. So that means that some of these human traffickers are actually smarter than lawyers. Because there's a lot of lawyers out there that were just like, damn, that. why is he saying that that's a, no, that's not a law. <laughs> that's, that's not a law. So what you're saying is right now is that separating children was a law, but it really isn't a law. It was a policy that was actually put forth in your policy. But even though it says in the United States that anybody that's convicted of a crime and housed in jail will be separated from their children. Yes, they will be separated from their children, but they will either be placed with the nearest relative or they will be applied, uh, supplied with a foster care system. That is not what you're doing to the children at the, uh, you know, border. You're sending them hundreds to thousands of miles away from their families. Don't we pay for that gas? Gas is higher than a motherfucker. Why are you taking these people to New York? Texas is big as fuck. It's your biggest goddamn state. Why are you taking them out of Texas? We have plenty of land here in Texas. And I'm pretty sure there's plenty of fucking Walmarts here if you really want to go that route. I'm not fucking condoning it because at the same time, you're putting them in cages when you get them to New York, New Jersey, Atlanta, the mayor of Atlanta has to tell you, no, our jails is not for your immigrant kidnapped children. What kind of shit is that? You really want to put innocent children in cages hundreds to thousands of miles away from their parents and then say that that's the law. The law also says that you shall supply them with human, with humane fucking living conditions. First, they should be with their family. So if anything, why didn't you deport them? If anything, why didn't you just turn them? You said you wanted to bypass the judge anyway. It doesn't sound like you really do. It doesn't really sound like you do. Because if anything, you would have kept at least that part of the past administrations going while you did it. We probably wouldn't even have too much of an issue with this situation if you wasn't separating children from their families. That's the problem. That's the problem. Because where the parents are at, I mean, excuse me, where these children are at, the parents could even could be just as easily there with them. But you bring them further into the United States. Then you allocate our tax dollars to people who you don't want here. Man, just let them come in. Let them get a job. They can pay taxes. Am I wrong? Am I wrong for saying that they just let them in, go ahead and get them signed up at the border? It's jobs here. It is jobs here. Y'all keep talking about there ain't no jobs here. Okay, let me tell you something. People who already been established here, if you've been born here, then ain't no reason why you shouldn't have your own business by now. If you are over the age of 21, I know people that's 16, 17 that have their own business. And I'm not talking about illegal drug dealers. I know if you want to go there, I know some 12 year olds. <laughs> I'm just bullshit. But anyways, they, for real, why don't you have your own business right now? Why aren't you a job creator? That way, if you are a job creator, you can hire who you want. As long as you're following the rules of EEO, you know, equal employment opportunity. You know what I'm saying? But as a business owner myself, I actually try to get it to the level where I can hire people. That way I'm not worried about my job because, yes, I do have a job. But at the same time, I'm not worried. I'm not trying to have that job. I'm trying to own my own. I'm trying to run my own business because if I can do that, then I can supply jobs. And if you're really worried about the job industry like that, why are you not in the in the fucking industry to provide jobs? That's my question. And I've seen a perfect meme on Facebook. And I'm, I I know I was talking shit about Facebook a little earlier. But like I said, it was meant for people to get to, to get together and share, share ideas. But they need to see the whole picture. And this picture that we've seen, this meme that I've seen was actually so perfect. It was a picture of protesters sitting in the background. You know, and one of them had a sign. 
immigrants came and stole my job. And it was a girl, it like, looked like she was in about freshman in college, maybe a, a, a junior or whatever. But um, she uh, had a sign up saying that, uh, well, if an undocumented worker with, with no high school diploma and do not know English can come here and steal your job, you didn't really need it. I'm lying. That ain't what she said at the end. She said she feels sorry for you. But me, I don't feel sorry for you. You really didn't need it. You did not need that job. Obviously, what you needed was you needed to go back to school. And what you needed to do was actually get a fucking education and get a vocation and then start maybe get a that have that trade and turn that trade into your own business. See, that's what we should be thinking about. Instead, we're thinking about being slaves. Mm. And let me tell you something. Corporations pay less money, less taxes than uh, the average worker. Yeah. You better go look at it. Trump actually did that so you can start your own business. I don't understand. See, the, the, now, now I know I talk cash shit about Trump. See, Trump is a great businessman. I give him that. He can look at economic policy. And to me personally, he would have been very, a very, very great asset to Obama's administration. But as a president, he sucks. Let's just get that out of the way. He sucks. And it's all about empathy. He ain't supposed to have empathy in business, but you're supposed to have empathy as a president. So he would have been a great asset to anybody's administration. He would have been a great asset to anybody's administration. Hell, I wouldn't even be surprised he would have made it to to be able to be um on the board of uh, uh the. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Oh, I'm drawing a blank. But you know what I'm talking about. They just they just Janet Powell. Janet Janet Powell is it Janet Powell? Ah, 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 ah. You know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Central Bank, the Central Bank. Ah. Anyways, I'll be back with that in a minute. I'm going to go look that up and I'm going to be back with y'all on that one. But, uh, anyways, back to what I was saying with that. He would have probably, he would have been an asset to any other administration except his own because he cannot even listen to his own advisors. There are advisors that he has that he is supposed to actually get in touch with about certain policies that these people be like, damn, I found that out on the news. How in the hell did you find that out on the news? He was supposed to talk to you first. First. Who did he talk to? Let me know who he talked to because it sounds like he's taking orders at this point. If he ain't talking to his own advisors, then he's taking orders from somebody because somebody got to be his in his ear. Somebody has to be in his ear. And if they aren't in his ear, he is just, we just let this fucking little boy run straight through the goddamn toy store, touching every toy he want and opening up every toy. That's what he's doing. So I'm 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 really choose to believe somebody's in his ear because that's just horrible to believe that the United States uh, a population the citizens of the United States wanted a spoiled little child running through the toy store that just don't make sense to me and I hope that's not what it is you know now it's other things that I actually want to bring to the table you know uh, but. Uh, one thing you have to actually understand is that if you don't really research into these things, you're always going to make an in, uninformed opinion and you're going to put that uninformed opinion out as fact and somebody is going to believe your un, uninformed opinion and that uninformed opinion will become fact. And now that that uninformed opinion becomes fact, it actually caused so much damage that, well, you, it's nothing you can do about it. Now, I say that to say this. Everybody want to know why I have the idea that immigration is fucked up. How we are actually keeping people from coming into this country. And we actually advertised it to them. We, we had it in their fucking face all on TV. Every time they walk past a shop that has a TV, they look at it and they see America. And they said it's the home of the free, land of the brave. And that you should come here to make your, get, to get some of these golden streets that have been paved. And, you know, make your way in life and, and be better than where you was at your own country. 
Yeah, that's cool for Russian women who come here pregnant. But, oh, Lord forbid, we go down into Guatemala and fuck up everything down there, you know, because the United Fruit Company back in the 1950s wanted to keep the stolen land that they was actually growing bananas on and actually making a killing off of. And, you know, they didn't have to pay in Guatemala any tariffs because, you know, back then, nobody knew anything about that. That was a native uh, country that had pride in their bananas. And all of a sudden, here come some United States company called the United Fruit Company. And they stole everything from them. So whenever the president was talking about actually rectifying this issue and giving back this stolen land to actual Guatemalan farmers, they went. the United Fruit Company went to the CIA. And this is documented. This is not conspiracy. This is history. Like I say, if you do your research, you'll find the shit out. But anyways, they went to the CIA and asked the CIA for some help. And the CIA was like, oh, no, we can't have that because we need our bananas. We need our vitamin C. We need our vitamins. We need that. Tired of catching cramps. You know, I would drink more water, but this fucking whiskey is just so good. So I'm going to eat a banana and it'll be all right. I'm talking from personal experience there. I don't know if they did that back then, but I know I do that now. Hey, if I wake up with a hangover, I go eat me a banana, and I know I'm good for the rest. I ain't going to catch no cramp or nothing like that, you know? <laughs> but anyways, back to what I was saying. You know, they went and asked CIA for some help, and the CIA went down there and disrupted a whole administration. They they caused the coup you know, of rebellion, and then uh, they took over the country. Ever since then, our country has been so much political turmoil, has been in so much travesty that it has it has come to the point where it was a boiling pot. It was boiling over and people just had to get out of there. They was no longer being able to survive. So when people started leaving back in the 80s trying to get over here to the United States, United States Reagan was like, hey, hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, we got this war on drugs thing. Let's go ahead and throw them in there with the niggers. Go ahead, go ahead, throw them in there with them niggers. Yeah, fuck it. They want to come over here, we'll put their ass in prison then. Shit, no sound familiar? <laughs> Anyways, so with the war on drugs, you have now have Guatemalans, you got Hondurans, you got El Salvadorians, you got Mexicans, you got all kinds of Central and South Americans that are trying to immigrate to the United States for a better life. And they ended up getting caught up in this fucking drug cart, this drug fucking thing, because you got to remember, they don't know the laws like that over here like that. It's laws get passed. And hell, y'all don't even most of y'all didn't even know that the U.S. pulled out of the U.N. Human Rights Council. So how do you know that there was a law passed about weed? Uh, you know about that, huh? But you feel me? You won't tell me about the goddamn crack cocaine laws, though. Yeah, see, or the Percocet laws. Oh, yeah, see, that's what happened back in the 1980s. These immigrants was coming to Amer- the United States, excuse me. And they was, I keep saying coming to America, but they are coming from America. You know, coming from South and Central America to North America. But anyways, they came to the United States and they looking for asylum and just looking for a better way. And they get caught up in these drug drug fucking uh, um, deals and stuff because they get used. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, fuck it. Throw their ass in jail. And guess what they doing while they in jail? They learn how to be in gangs because they like, fuck, I came over here for a better life and got thrown in jail. And then people start looking out for them because, you know, people are all about using people. So they're all about using people. So what happened then is these people, they uh, cuddle up to this fool. And I don't mean to call them fool, but hey, that's what they were because they didn't know no better. You know what I'm saying? And they got cuddled up to and they found out that they had a weakness and they exploited that weakness by giving them food. By making sure they had clean boxers, making sure they had clean socks, making sure that they ain't have to work too hard in the fields, making sure that whenever they come around in the cafeteria, they got two plates instead of one, you know, things of that nature. And oh, wait, shit, if I, hey, they're going to be looking out for me, I'm going to look out for them. So these immigrants get initiated into gangs. And then while in prison, they learn the gang life. So now it comes time to, oh, well, now that you done did your time in the U.S., 
because you know the U.S. Every, taxpayers got to pay for every, everybody that's locked up. I don't care how you put it. Everybody that's locked up, the U.S. taxpayer got to pay for. So I don't understand why y'all want more people locked up. Never understood that. Never understood that. I just wanted y'all to think about that for a second. But anyways, back to the story at hand. They end up becoming gang members and rising in the ranks to the point where they actually know a little bit about a little bit and they go over there back, get deported right back to Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Mexico. And what do they do? They created gangs because hey, the government fucked up. They ain't looking out for us. We got to eat out. We got to eat some kind of way. So we know how to get drugs here. We got the drugs here. They looking for the drugs over there. I know who to call. So now we got people that's actually sneaking drugs in here because that's what they was taught. They actually creating games in their own nation. And these gangs are actually getting so powerful, they running the streets and they extorting people, uh, small businesses, and they 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 are extorting politicians who are trying to do good, and they just keeping the corrupt fiasco going the whole time. And guess what? It boiled all the way down into 2018, where we have these Hondurans, El Salvadorians, and Guatemalans at our borders. Trying to get in here so they can be safe. So safe and feel so safe to the point where even if we throw their ass in jail, they feel better than if they was when they was in Guatemala, Honduras, or El Salvador. This is their story. Now, you can say that ain't your problem all you want, but at the end of the day, it is your government's problem. Your government started this for them. Can they at least go down there and help them fix this shit? Can Trump, if Trump really wants to fix the immigration problem, well, we've been going over to Iraq, Kuwait, Afghanistan, all these places that that we say did some shit and they ain't even do no shit. So can we at least get over there to El Salvador? Get over there to Honduras? Get over there to all these places that are being treated like shit, but no, what you decided to do was leave the Human Rights Council because you wanted to set an example. What kind of example are you setting? That when shit get hard, we could just bail? Oh, oh, I got it. Uh, we don't want to be held accountable for our human rights errors. That's what it is. It got to be because you happen to leave the U.S., I mean, excuse me, the U.N. Human Rights Council in the midst of the fucking immigrant sk- children scandal. And you know what Obama actually had signed or signed while he was in office, right? The rights of the indig- indigenous child. Or excuse me, the rights of the child and the rights of the indigenous people. Those are two documents that he wrote, or excuse me, that he signed. That you violated. And it sounds like. You may be. Hiding from accountability. Are you really hiding from accountability? Or are you already. Excuse me. Did they really ask you. In the human rights council. What the hell are you doing? Because. Your excuse. Was that. They. Were not paying attention to. Russia. China. Egypt and other countries that were a part of the Human Rights Council that do not really respect human rights in their own nations as well. That's what you started to say. And then you said that they're too busy pointing the finger at Israel when Israel ain't did shit wrong. I mean, come on, man. Uh, oh, wait. I'm not even finna validate that. I see what's going on. What's going on is, is that they called your ass out and you had all these fingers to point just like you pointed them at the Democrats when you made a policy that fucked up these children's lives. You made that policy and you said that the Democrats made a law, which was a rightful law 
because at the same time, the children were taken care of, but it didn't provide provisions for illegal immigrants. You decided to throw that in there just to throw that in there. And just like you pointing fingers at the Democrats, you pointed fingers at China, you pointed fingers at Russia, you pointed fingers at Egypt, you pointed fingers at Venezuela, you pointed fingers at so many countries trying to get it off of your ass. And then you tried to turn it around on Israel, knowing damn well you give Israel hundreds of millions of dollars a year of our tax paying money for what something that germany did did you help germany do that shit because according to america united states law an accomplice is charged as well as the actual criminal meaning that if you help somebody kill somebody it don't matter if you pull the trigger or not you are a murderer as well so is that why you paying a hundred million dollars to Israel every year or however much you say you paying them at one point in time it was a hundred million dollars all but that was years ago and inflation and the stock market and gold and silver so anything could have changed but is that why because that seems to be making so much so much truth right there I mean it makes so much sense I, I, if I felt like I did something wrong I'll be paying off for it too that's what they say Bill Cosby did no, that's what they said Trump did himself. Stormy Daniels. Come on now, we, we understand the game. The game ain't the same, but the game always ain't going to change. You know, I may, I may have said that wrong. I did say that wrong. I said the game ain't going to change, but the game is always going to be the same. You feel me? <laughs> and that's what I'm just peeping. So with that being said, I, I don't think I should even say anymore. I said enough, but if you don't really, if you can't think like that, if you can't really open up your minds and open up your eyes and see, is that, oh, wait, I'm sorry. One more thing we have to talk about. Trump won his travel ban. I know we talk, talked down, we, we touched on that earlier and I was supposed to visit that again, but yes, Trump won his travel ban, not the Muslim ban. That is the Muslim ban. It's the travel ban. That's the Muslim ban, but not the Muslim ban. That's the travel ban. You know, you get what I'm saying? Anyways, even though it is written up a certain way, it doesn't excuse how he delivered it because the way he delivered it was exactly how it, what was on his mind and what was on his mind was exactly what was written in his heart. This ban was the stop Muslims from coming into this country. So, but anyways, the Supreme Court actually five to four said uh, they said it was good to go. The way that he written it up the third time was good to go. Now, the reason why we haven't gotten any immigration reform through the Congress is because the Republicans are pushing this wall. This is what they're doing. They're pushing this wall. They're using these immigrant children as hostages for this wall. And that's the reason why I didn't pass on, I believe, Tuesday of uh, the end of June. You know? So it didn't pass. And they blamed the 190 Democrats, excluding the 41 Republicans that also voted against the law, the bill. But it, anyways, what I wanted to bring to your attention is, is that a wall is... Something that would be great to keep people out. I'm not agreeing to it. So don't take that the wrong way. But what I'm saying is that it is a great, uh, any kind of wall would be great to keep any kind of people out of any kind of territory. It would be, especially if it's tall enough, especially if it's deep enough, especially if it's thick enough, especially if it's properly manned. You know, it would do a fascinating job of keeping people out. That's what kingdoms have done all of eternity every time a kingdom was uh built they built it with high walls you know even some battle uh, some generals actually learned from generals that utilized high walls at castles and things of that nature the wind wars so there's even um 
a strategy to it. So I'm not knocking that. That's not what I'm knocking. What I'm knocking is the fact that not only does it keep people out, but it also keep people in. Now, with this immigration reform, if he does get this southern wall built, there will be only a few places of points of entry into the United States. But these, these same places would also be the exits out of the United States. I just don't feel comfortable with the fact that I may have to ask, can I leave the United States? I'm just not comfortable with that. I'm just not comfortable with the fact that there may be a big, thick, concrete, steel rebar wall in between me and my freedom. I've been there with a fence that was properly manned. I don't know how I do with a wall. I don't know if y'all can actually close your eyes. Let's do this. Take a second. Close your eyes. Imagine you're driving along beautiful Texas, southern Texas streets. Or or southern California streets or Arizona streets, wherever the Mexico border, uh, U.S. border resides. Just imagine you're looking at that sun. You, you, you got the top down, hair blowing in the wind, you know. And if you're like me, you're probably smoking on a good one. You know what I'm saying? You're feeling real good. And you know you're headed to Mexico to have a good time. You really want to hit up Cancun, but you might stop just at Progresso. <laughs> you know, and you get to a big-ass fucking wall. That all of a sudden, the shadow just comes out of nowhere and this wall just pops up out of nowhere. And you have to stop by this gate. So you stop by. And you ask, hey, what's going on? Can I get out? Excuse me, sir. Uh, can I see license and registration? Uh, probable cause, sir. Sir. Can I see license and registration? Uh, okay. You give them license of registration just to be nice. Because you only just trying to get to Mexico to chill. You ain't used to this. You ready? You thought you didn't have to do all this until you came back through. Right? Right. Um, sir, well, it says right here that you caught a felony back in 2004. And it is a violent crime. Yeah, but I did my time for that. Will you, sir, sir, sir. Quiet. Yeah, well, we are not allowing convicted felons to leave the country anymore. Yes, we have revived that law. Yeah, so you're going to have to turn around and yeah, go back to your home and go straight back to your home. Sir, it would be a armed officer there to make sure that you have returned home. Yes, thank you. All right, sir, you have a great day. Sir, sir, now fuck that. I'm going. To Mexico. You can't stop me from going to... Sir, if you do not, I will be forced to detain you. Well, I'm not going to keep with that scenario because anybody that's smart can actually peep the rest of that scenario and how it may end out. That's all I'm saying. The wall ain't just good for keeping people out. It's great for people keeping in... People keeping... Keeping people in. Woo, that was keeping people in. Uh, that was, <laughs> had a little tongue twister right there. But yeah, but that's some serious shit. That is very great way of keeping people in. So, what I would suggest is everybody to really think about, would that affect you? Because we know that there's people that know that it won't affect them. And they think it's because they're law-abiding citizens. When they don't under, actually understand that because of Federal Directive 15... There are different laws for different people. And this shit, who's to say when it's going to stop? I mean, we are in a democracy, a form of government that's ruled by the majority. And I'm just a minority. That's all I'm saying. But you know what it is, though. This is your boy, Mr. E, boss of the South Side Bosses. And you know I'm gonna always this bring you that. Revolutionary album. And I'm gonna keep bringing you the truth again. I'm gonna have to give that disclaimer that everything that I said on this episode and every episode where you hear my voice is 
Only the opinion of Mr. E. Boss to the Southside Bosses. It is not the opinion of Southside Boss Connection, Southside Bosses, nor is it the opinion of BOSS Radio. And also, when we give you investment advice, because we are about to start that back up again, we are only giving it to you for educational purposes. We are not giving you advice on what to actually invest in. And we also ask you to make sure that you understand that there is risk to be taken whenever investing and that you may lose money when you are investing. But the best thing to do is to keep at it and to make sure you stay strong. You never lose until you sell. You heard me? So everything that we say here is just for is for educational purposes and educational purposes only. And also, if you like this episode, definitely like our page at Southside Boss Connection on Facebook. Join our group at Southside Bosses, where we talk about hill, underground hip-hop, R&B, rap, and reggae. And we also have True Heritage, where we talk about civics, jurisprudence, and the like. And we also talk about economic salvation, when making sure that you are economically, excuse me, financially literate in order to be able to count your money. You heard me? And not only just count your money but also be able to fulfill every destiny that you need to make financially wise you heard me so go ahead and join those groups we have great great topics on there we also have great resources on there you have books pdfs test and every self test with the answers and more you know so go ahead and join those groups that way you can go ahead and start elevating your life because it's only going to go down one way and that's the way it's right you heard me so, like I say, go ahead and like our page. You also follow us at www.sbcmovement.com. And you could, any artists that want to get their music heard, definitely send it to us at G, uh, southsidesubmissions at gmail.com. But we can get your music go any of our numerous shows. New Music Monday, Revolutionary Hour, Reggae Hour, Passion Hour, and the more. You heard me. And you already know what's going on this fall with our underground interviews. So this is your boy, Mr. E. Boss of the Southside Bosses. And we're going to leave y'all with some great, great music. We're going to go ahead and get the plan for you. You already know what it is with my boy Julian Lennon with Silk Purses. Here on B.O.S.S. Radio, we do it live, baby. B.O.S.S. Southside Soul's in heaven, flight 9-11 Before we die, Aaron Russo answered 
answered that question Sat down with Rockefeller, now they buying FEMA camps Never signed a dotted line, your signature's a stamp They say the worst is yet to come Martial law in effect, I'm praying for Ferguson If the people knew the truth, America's really cursed Fuck the judge, I'm claiming my silk purse Fuck Silk purses, silk purses Open your eyes, this ain't the designer version Silk purses, silk purses Open your eyes, this ain't the designer version Open up your mind, maybe then you'll see Money makes the world go round, either your wolf or your sheep Silk purses, silk purses Open your eyes, this ain't the designer version The defense attorney, Donna West, is trying to take down her credibility In this particular exchange, now and that's because he described him as a creepy ass cracker. Yes. So it was racial, but it was because Trayvon Martin put race in this. No. You don't think that's a racial comment? No. You don't think that creepy ass cracker is a racial comment? No. Uh, the ultimate goal that these people have in mind is the goal to uh, create a one-world government run by the banking industry, run by the bankers, run by the bankers. Right? There'll be no more cash. And this is getting me straight from Rockefeller himself. This is what they want to accomplish. He's the one who told me uh, 11 months before 9/11 ever happened that there was going to be an event. Never told me what the event was going to be. There was going to be an event, there was going to be an event. And, it's, and there's going to be this war on terror, of which there's no real enemy, and the whole thing is a giant hoax, you know, but it's a way for the government to take over the American people. 9-11 was done by people in our own government and our own banking system to perpetuate, to perpetuate the fear of the American people and to subordinating themselves to anything the government wants them to do. That's what it's about, and to create this war, this endless war on terror. Endless war on terror. Endless war on terror. This is the revolutionary album. Everybody got swag, swag. pulling max out, they gon' mad. mad. Step on they brand new sneakers, okay. better run cause that's your time. <laughs> Oops, I mean your butt tops, they'll kill you for them Reeboks. Especially them brand new J's, they praise them ugly high tops. But this ain't bought no sneakers, uh-uh. by the way I ain't no preacher. No preacher. I am not of this world, uh-uh. I am an ugly creature. creature. But God loves ugly, don't he? Uh-huh. Don't think so, you baloney. Come for them dirty ninjas, Matthew 913, homie. Where's the poo poo don't stay? You a simple got big bang? Raised up in the house of God, got, got, got dipped in a tank. You full of it, like Easter Sunday pulpit. Overzealous, lacking knowledge, cause you knew in it, but you doing it. But you ruin it, that's right, I said it. Over pursuing it, don't know what you're talking about. Shut your mouth and put some glue in it. Okay. Some say he real with it uh-huh. Either way, you gotta deal with it Take a pill cause I'm ill with it Ain't a thief but I'm stealing it Stick, stick, stick killing it My TV's evil What happened to these people? Got him waiting outside for the sequel Yeah, Simon says jump And the joy says sure The tube is full of garbage But your brain wants more Dummies are rapping Teeny beanies are clapping Tell me how did this happen? Corporate fingers are snapping huh. They think it's beautiful But ain't suitable That's my opinion I think they're evil And they're trying to turn us To their minions But I will rise before I go and buy it My gosh, turn is a tire These rappers should retire And turn in their 
pensions and never ever mention they did this for a living most of all for attention in a little bit of paper their moment was a vapor you're here one day and gone the next i'm gonna catch you later later Close. 